Do you remember playing Little League? Here, I'll bring yeah. this up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring this up. I want to ask you this because I'm so curious with you. You baseball guys remember everything. It's unbelievable to me. Like I've you and golfers I've never figured out how you can relive like every pitch, every at bat, every swing. So we had something cool. I was uh, as you're we we're picking this uh, episode up here with Bill Kruger. I was telling Bill about uh, the Fisher Plumbing Little League Ballard Little League that took it on the chin this weekend. Okay, so we took it on the chin. We lost twenty six to three. But there was something really cool that happened during the game. One of our kids that plays for us, he's 12 years old. He's never played baseball before. This is his first year playing baseball, which, you know, most of these kids have played since they're six or seven. So this guy, a kid named Brian, great kid. Like, you want every kid to be like Brian. Listens, works hard. You tell him one time to correct something, he corrects it. Good enough athlete to pick it up. But he was so raw and new to this bill that, like, you in the I remember the first practice we're like hey go play center field and he's like where's that at <laughs> like that like you are telling him like everything there's three outs four balls a walk I mean and he's just like okay but once you tell him he gets it all wow. so he had not had a hit this was our seventh game of the season but he was getting better in practice and we working on his swing and all that and he gets his first hit and he, I mean the look on his face and just the excitement and yeah. it was just, it, you know, it was unbelievable. It just, it, it, I just didn't even think about what the score was when it, you know, when we were getting beat down. I just thought about my only takeaway from that day was that kid got his first hit and what a thrill that must be for him. I mean, can you, re I mean, you, you guys all remember that kind of stuff. I mean, I do. I, I always, I remember my first hit. And it's well, fun. I, it's just really cool. I don't know that I remember my first hit. I just, I remember my first year of Little League and I was a 10 year old and I was playing on a, a, a 10 to 12 team. Uh, we won it. We won it. And, uh, you know, what was cool is when I got to the big leagues and I had left Chicagoland area because I grew up in Chicagoland area, my little league coach showed up at the, at a game at Comiskey Park. Oh, John Veer, the that... milkman. He was a milkman. He delivered milk. And he'd show up in his milkman uniform a lot of times for practice. But he had unbridled enthusiasm, unbridled yeah. enthusiasm, positivity, happiness, you know, and and I think our, we all reveled in it. I mean, we were good, but, you know, it was ice cream, good or bad. And uh, yeah. that was when 31 Flavors was a big deal. Okay. Not like, yeah. oh, um, what's 31 Flavors? <laughs> in the 60s, so, that was a big deal. It's so <laughs> funny you bring up ice cream. It's um, with my kid, and I. It, there was a, a golf, win or lose, my question always to him is, right when the game is over, do you want to get ice cream? Like, where, where do we want to go? Like, win or lose? Because uh, I saw this great clip um, a while ago from uh, Patty Harrington, the golfer. And he was talking about playing with his kid. And, mm -hmm. he was, you know, and, and he just was like, hey, if your kid wants to play, it's great. He's like, don't force it on them. But the second that you can tell that they don't want to play anymore, just just stop. Just just move on and just like, hey, let's let's wrap it up. We're done for the day. Yeah. But he would always say to his kid, all right, let's uh, let's go get some ice cream now. Because the 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 what he's his point was the kid will remember win or lose good or bad, he'll just remember hanging out with dad and just having ice cream. Yeah, that that's the tick. Not the hey, let's drive home in the car. Let me t let's go through each inning of what you did wrong. <laughs> yeah. All the X's and O's. Yeah, it's I was, a, you know, I was, little things. I, I you know, as far as parenting one hundred and one, I, I I had a daughter that played a little bit of sports, but my parents were great. You know, they let me have it. They let me dream. They let me have have fun. They, there was never any criticism. There was never any, let's go over the game. That's um, great. It just wasn't part of it. And yeah, they just, they came to the games and they, they wanted me to play and they knew I wanted to play and that was it. Yeah. So that's awesome. I, I, I applaud parents that step away and don't put too much pressure on their kids. Yeah. It's, it's them, hard. Let them, find, it's... let them find their own, their own, what they love. Right. Yeah. Expose them, expose them, be committed, but let them find it. Yeah, Bill Kruger with us. Everybody <laughs> talking uh, Mariners, but no, you're right. I mean, we could spend. You, we, I could spend an yeah, hour on it's, this. It's, probably it's, it's more. It's a great time. It. I, 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 I take lots of snapshots in your mind. Of course, there'll be physical snapshots, but take lots yeah. of snapshots in your mind. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Bill joins us uh, every Monday brought to you by the rise above foundation. He'll have more before we wrap up on the uh, golf charity that he has coming up rise above golf classic coming up on Monday, June 24th at the golf club at Snoqualmie Ridge. Uh, we will have more information on that, but native youth rise above dot org is the website. So uh, Kruger joins us every Monday root sports all brought to you again by the rise above foundation. Well, I mean, have you ever played, have you ever in your career woke up, went to the ballpark and saw snow on the field and said, I guess we'll play later today. I mean, that was so odd this weekend in Colorado. Not yeah. unusual for people that live there, but odd for us to watch that. Yeah. You know, my, my experience in the big leagues, there were snow flurries, snow flurries in Detroit, snow flurries in Milwaukee. Um, I remember those days, but we didn't, I don't remember physical snow on the, on the field kind of a stuff. I, yeah. I did. I do remember, um, the, when I, I was a Denver Zephyr for like a second, uh, they were getting me ready to join the Milwaukee Brewers. They wanted me to get a couple starts in after spring training. And, and I arrived there and it was just like, it was just like this weekend in Colorado, snow on the ground, frigid, 24 hours later, 70 degrees, snow gone, playing baseball, mile high stadium. But yeah, snow on the ground when, when, when we rolled into Denver. So yeah, Denver's a weird place, man. It is. Uh, my, my wife's from there, so we, we'd go back there and visit a, a lot, you know, visiting her parents and, and family. And I just never could get over. I love telling this one story. I went there for a, a basketball game to watch, and we went inside at NCAA tournament. We went inside, and, and in the morning, it was like 70 degrees, and then we right. left. You know, And I was inside all day, and I walked out <laughs> like at 8 o'clock at night, and it was 31 degrees and snowing. And I'm just like, I've never – like, what, what happened? Like, why does it do this? It's so – weird but yeah. god those players they were all bundled up on saturday i mean julio looked like the fat kid in christmas story you know where he falls yeah. down and can't get up that just has got to be so awful it's not you know this isn't the iditarod i mean come on now let's just <laughs> let's just let's just the face mask i mean seriously do you really need a face mask to play baseball it was cold yeah i don't know that's a little how much time. I mean, I didn't um, grow up in the tropics. I didn't grow up in the tropics. You know, I never had, yeah. you know, you probably never wore a jacket his whole life. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it can be hard for someone like that. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was hard for me to watch. How much of a how much of an advantage in games like that, cold weather games, how much of an advantage do pitchers have? They have the advantage, especially once you're in the game. You know, once you're pitching, man, you're the warmest guy in the field. Everybody else is cold. And, you know, you get one ball on the hands and you're just not like like hitting at all. And the ball doesn't go anywhere uh, as long as yeah. there's not sl real slick conditions. If it's not getting wet, uh, then then it's definitely an advantage pitcher. I mean, some guys have a hard time. They, 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 they say the ball gets slick when they, when they get cold. They have a hard time gripping it. That was never a problem for me. I was the opposite. When it got real humid, I was such a profuse sweater that I had trouble gripping the ball when it got really hot. But mm -hmm. when it was cold, that was just right. That was just Goldilocks for me. We've talked a lot about here on your Monday visits, just about Luis Castillo. What did uh, you, what did you see different? What did you like of his performance this past weekend? Well, I mean, Luis's game is is the difference. He he got he got his, his start previous starting in Chicago. He made a greater commitment to slider and changeup, and he got it sorted out. He got a better feel for it. He started landing his slider. He, he threw almost 47% off-speed pitches. And then this last game against Colorado, he was able to establish his slider early. And then once he was able to do that and set some kind of an off-speed pitch into the strike zone, then he just has gotten so much better at pitching at the top of the zone. He wasn't doing that at the beginning of the season. He was throwing, he was trying to pitch up there, and the balls were right down the middle. And they were getting whacked. Now he's just right at the edge. And if you remember Castillo over the last year and a half before this, you know, his array around the strike zone, they'd always show the array of all his pitches and, and they'd all be just right around the edges of the box. Right. I mean, he's just, he has an incredible ability to pitch off the edge. I mean, there's a blessing and a curse to that. You know, if guys aren't swinging at it or if they're falling balls off, your pitch count gets eaten. Right. And he's not a, a guy that gives you a, a real deep performance all the time, but he's going to strike people out. And he was right where, We've seen Castillo in the past. It just had to be. It just had to be. I mean, the league is hitting like under 225 for the past three years off. For them to be hitting 337, that was going into this last start. That just, it's, 
it's it's a stat it's a number that you have to throw out right because it's just not it's not real it's going to revert to the mean right and its mean is like 215 220 okay yeah. he's hard to hit so it was great to see great to see and he just he just had his way did you like maybe the execution of it? You've talked about it. I know Divish has talked about it with me of just not, you know, when you're trying to put guys away, not trying to, you know, everything down the middle of the plate and like, right. let's live off the plate a little bit. Let's live outside the zone and get guys to chase stuff. You know, Cal has even talked about that. You see maybe in these last few starts, more of an emphasis for him to try and do that. Yeah. I mean, he's getting the fastball above the hands. That's where it needs to be. And a little bit more chase on the on on the other pitches when it needs to be. He was throwing a lot of balls down the middle. I mean, I think he pitches with such premier confidence. He has premier, superior confidence in his ability to get people out. So it has to be almost a shock to his system for him to get hit, right? Uh, he has a different approach. I mean, he's he's looking for swing and miss. He's looking for swing and miss. That's the pitcher he is. In today's game, today's game loves that guy because they're not saying we need you to give us seven eight innings. You're the number one starter. They're saying punch out the world, be difficult to hit, lots of swing and miss. That's what our stats love. And, you know, and, and to his credit, uh, he does carry the game pretty well, but not as not to the standard that I think you wanted to have back, you know, in the day where you're looking for 200 innings from your starters. Right. So, but we're not going to hold him to that. We just want him to be tough to hit. And that's what he is. He's tough to hit. He's got great stuff. Hey, look, Hey, th- this was the, this was the Colorado Rockies. They had the uniforms on. They had the colors. <laughs> they were in the ballpark. But let's not let's not get carried away. This is not the Blake Street Bombers. This is not even even close to being an average Colorado Rockies team. This is a bad team. Yeah. They got no starting pitching in their lineup, huh? Who? What? Charlie Brackman on one leg. Maybe McMahon can play a little bit, and the rest of the cast is guys they've gotten in deals that weren't really good deals. So I don't know who they are. That's an offensive ballpark. They're in trouble. Yeah, that's it's a bad, it's a bad baseball a team. They're gonna lose okay, so let me ask you a, a weird question, but it's like I I want like real kind of like hardcore X's and O's, not X's and O's, but just the 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 physical breakdown of it. Yeah. How does he throw so hard? Because he's not big. Oh, oh, like Castillo. Castillo. Like how, yeah. how does he generate that velocity well, I, I think, I and think, that speed? Um, he's, you know, arm, arm, arm strength and, 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 the, and the gift of, of, of arm speed is, is at some level sort of like whether you're a fast runner or you're not, right? Some people can run fast. You can train. You can train and can incrementally better as a runner, right? And now in baseball, with what they can do with all of the uh, – the ability to take pictures throughout your in high speed, be able to detect things where you're inefficient. There's an inefficiency in the way you're taking the ball of your glove or the way you're, you're, you're setting up or whatever it might be that they, they can find ways to find more velocity, right? They, they can do that, but he, he, he's, he's, he's got a gifted arm, right? And, and how did he get a gifted arm? He didn't have high speed training when he was growing up, right? Mm-mm. He grew up probably a lot like the rest of us did. Yeah. Uh, you know, the twelve month throwing program, right? Except there were no snowballs, no snowballs in the twelve month program. program. Uh, and what else were you throwing? Program, what, eight, were you throwing balls, acorns too? Acorns, Was that what you're throwing? Balls, <laughs> snowballs, but, 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 but is there ball, something squad, back to baseball? Yeah, yeah. Is you're there something? I mean, is is it his legs? Is it the way no, he, he seems very? He just has great speed and and, okay. and and talent, and just he's talented, right? He's got a talented arm, and. You know, he's focused on the dirt circle. I don't know how good a player he was, a position player. I, I don't know. Maybe he was a pretty good position player. I don't I mean, I mean, he's he, he's yeah. clearly a guy that can repeat his delivery. He's kind of a – he's not real tall, and he kind of mm. has a flat arm release, so he kind of upshoots you a little bit, kind of upshoots yeah. you a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's well into his career, and he's still above 95 thrower. I mean, he's throwing a lot of innings. I mean, he's a – He's a hundred mile an hour arm, you know, and those just don't, those aren't, don't grow on trees, particularly guys that start that have that kind of arm speed. Right. And he's got yeah. other pitches. He's got a great change up. He's got a he's slider. I mean, they're, they're, they're just, they're okay. You know, he's sloppy, he's sloppy sometimes with it, but he's got such, such power that he gets away with a little bit of uh, sloppiness. He's cleaned it up. He was sloppy the first few games because left-handers were, were just having their way with him. Right. And he wasn't able to create any, depth between his fastball and his changeup or his slider. And now he's, he's found it again because the numbers, they don't lie. This is what he's done his whole career. The, um, 
Julio, last six games, is starting to warm up a little bit. 464, 483, 536, OPS well over 1,000. Still without a home run, but, again, the singles are dropping. The hits are dropping for him. Feels like he's gonna, he's starting to come out of this. Is it just, hey, it takes certain players time? Has he made an adjustment maybe that you have seen that maybe, you know, morons like me who give up, uh, coach a team who give up 20 runs in an inning wouldn't see? <laughs> I wish I could say I could see an adjustment that's being made. I think hits are falling for him. I mean, Cincinnati, that wasn't very good pitching. And Colorado, that wasn't very good pitching. But you know what? You got to wear the poor pitching out because you're not going to hit the elite pitching, right? Yeah. And so he's making some hay on some mediocre pitching. I don't see an adjustment. What he does really well, he's got the each row factor. It bounces twice in the infield. It's a knock. It bounces mm-hmm. twice in the infield. It's a knock. How many knocks did he have on balls that bounce twice? Yeah. Top spinners, stupid choices by infielders to not go get it, right? And he's safe. Right, he's safe. How many hit? He had three, three of those, maybe four. Yeah, he's not crushing. And then he had the a couple of jam sure. shots. He had a couple balls in the nose, and that's it. It really isn't anything different. You know, they're they're it's porous pitching. They're, they 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 throw pitches, and he swings off the plate, and then they throw him a slider right down the middle, and he whacks it. I mean, that's just not smart. But you know what? You got to take advantage. And his yeah. ability to get hits when he's not swinging really well is great. It's allowed him, it allow him to hit for a higher average as a player. Will home runs come? I think so. I, I, I think he gets long. I think he wants to hit a homer. His two strike swing. It's just, I'd like to see him be a little tighter, but you know, I'm nitpicking. I'm sorry. He's, he's just, he, he's immensely talented, very confident. The one thing about him is that he is an up the middle, the other way, kind of an approach which allows him, he's a pretty good breaking ball hitter. For a young kid, he's a good breaking ball hitter. I wouldn't throw him too many breaking balls for strikes. I'll tell you that right now because he stays on the breaking ball pretty good. Um, but, you know, swing choices still, yeah. But, you know, guys that throw the ball down the middle, you know, and he's going to get he's gonna get hit a game if he, hit, if he hits a top spinner, right? So, um, yeah, we need to see him slug a little bit more. You can't force slugging, right? You just got to be you got to be short and quick to the ball and not get, he gets a little muscly and long. Um, Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, it's good to see him go because the team really needs him to go. Uh, You know, we're going to get moments where Raleigh, of course, Raleigh had a great weekend. Hanniger is going to carry for a little bit. You hope Polanco wakes up a little bit of ham and egg everywhere else in the lineup. That's about it. They don't have a lot of mainstay bats. Okay. The uh, the catcher inter or the catch the uh, the interference in center field. When when you saw that, did you going back to the the play on on Sunday the first game? Dylan Moore goes back there in left field. Fan kind of comes over and interferes with him, touches the glove. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. Bud Black when he goes to the replay, do you think he's thinking at all that they're going to call him out, or no. is he thinking this is guaranteed going to be a home run? When you watched it, did you? Because I thought, hey, yeah, he interfered, but. I don't know. To me, it did not ever look like, seem like that Dylan Moore would come up with that, that that was going to be a home run uh, no matter what. what. What did you see? What was your takeaway? I mean, I felt like it was interference. I mean, to me, right. Dylan Moore had a chance to make a play. The guy got his glove over the over the rail. He was at the rail or over the rail, but we can't tell. Here, here's classic. Just let me get on my soapbox just for a second. Oh, we please do. For a lot of things. We have super slow. We got replay of everything on the field, right? And we get it right because – by gosh, you know, Puckett's gambling, and he needs to know that, that the call's called right. So we, 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 damn can't, right. Have, we can't have <laughs> the gamblers getting screwed over. That's that's the worst that's thing true. that can happen, right? But the it's one true. place where, where I think the replay mm. matters is fair or foul, home run or not. The rest yeah. of them, for me, can be thrown in the garbage can, okay? <laughs> that's how I feel about it, right? Let's be big boys, and let's get tough and take a couple bad calls and make Make your luck as the game wears on. We don't need a replay of every 15 tag play at third base, okay? We just don't. We don't. The ball beats them. The runner's out. Let's play okay. more baseball. But you know what? You want to get the fair, foul, homer, or not call right, then you need different camera angles. Rich, rich, yeah. richy, rich baseball. Get yeah, some let's different do camera it. angles. How come there's no angle? There's no camera on the pole? Why don't we have that, Jason? Yeah, like I, know I don't look, have a like microphone. Sta- like, like staring I don't, know, at I don't the- have a microphone, and that's a problem. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, 
That's not as big a problem as that camera on the on the hey, line of the fence. Okay. Hey, next we're week guess, I gu- we're guessing on that one. <laughs> next week, I guarantee you're gonna have a microphone. You're not gonna oh, forget. Well, it. You're not gonna about forget. Foul home run or not? <laughs> That's what I'll be thinking. Okay. So here's the t- here's the things with him. So should the first of all, this is why a rule needs to be in place that if you are over the age of 18, you are no longer yes. allowed to bring a glove to the game. Yeah, that, that you that, can't. Yeah. I mean, come, come on, what are we doing here? You're a grown adult. Stop bringing the glove to the ballpark. You're not playing. Stop. I know. Jesus. And, you know, and, and 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 you know, luckily nobody cares in Denver because if he'd have been in Chicago, they'd he'd be oh, he'd be like there'd be his life would be in, in, in everywhere he went. They'd be looking for him. Right, uh, Bartman, you have to, have to Bartman, change his name. Bartman two point yeah. Right, the um, hey, yeah, of course. Hey, a uh, last thing for you, one that might have gone uh, unnoticed, but so the first game yesterday, Kirby on Sunday, Kirby pitches, and he yeah. leaves after five innings, and I'm yeah. watching and I'm thinking, God, he looks, he looks sick. I thought he was sick. He just didn't look. He didn't look healthy. And you look, kind of look yeah. on the on the gun. And you're seeing that the velocity's not there. Then he notes after the game, and so does Scott Service, that he's got he's dealing with arm soreness. Oh, okay. So now yeah. this to me becomes the red flag. If he's dealing with arm soreness, and you're going to probably tell me every pitcher probably goes through this. One, I would ask you, do they go through it this early? And two, I'm hypersensitive to it, Bill, because we've talked about this before. There's so many arm issues this year in baseball. It seems like. I mean, guys, you know, big name players are missing the season, having surgery. Garrett Cole hasn't pitched yet. Verlander just came back. Uh, how should they handle this now moving forward? He says he'll be gone in a day or two. Uh, but when you hear George Kirby saying, yeah, I'm dealing with some ar- arm soreness, what should the reaction uh, from the organization be uh, with him moving forward? Well, I think it's good to be honest about your arm. Um, you got to know what the difference between injury and soreness is. I mean, you're going to be sore, right? And maybe he's got a little arm fatigue and, you know, he, he freed up, he freely admitted at, at 88 after five, that that was, that was, he was starting to get tired and maybe just get a little of that fatigue in the bicep kind of achy arm, you know, that happens early in the season, right? Cold weather. Um, you know, I think you just back off on between starts, he gets a little treatment he should be fine. I mean, I, Okay. We're, we're, we have to guess. We don't know, right? This is the day and age of uh, of uh, transparency, I guess, right? You, you, you come out at her five and you say things like, my arm was a little bit sore. I don't think I'd ever have said that in a million years. But Well, I'm, I'm glad I did. I, I just... The, the, no, I mean, honestly, it's just good. Been so I mean, it's many, than, yeah, there's just been you know. so many injuries this year in this sport that I just yeah. hope that, you know, it's... You know, you, you start thinking of the worst. Well, it starts with arm soreness, and then it's, oh, my God, he's going to miss a start. And then, you know, I, I'm i just – I start going through all the scenarios in, in my head with him because, I mean, I love George Kirby, so yeah, I want to think happen. All these right. Guys, I mean, he's so free and easy. I mean, his motion is so good. I, I think he's going to be fine. It's stupid. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just dumb how effortless <laughs> he throws the ball. Yeah. It's just effortless, and yeah. uh, it's, it's fun to watch. He's all right. Next week – you promised to uh, to have a mic. I'm going to hold yeah, you. Yeah. I'm going to hold you to it. You and will. You're going to get uh, real... baseball to institute the 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 camera on the wall, right? So that's camera deal, on the right? wall, and also, and then and then we're we're banning people from again over 18. 18. Yeah, that, I, you, I think you that's enough, take a that's glove a very good to role. a game. Yeah. They, they, when they check right. you when you come through, they say, yeah, yeah, you're going to go back to your car. Take it. Just take it. Or just take uh, it. Rise up and give it. Give just it to take kids. it. Yes, give it to a kid that comes in. <laughs> Rise Above Golf Classic, uh, yeah. June 24th, Golf Club at Snoqualmie Ridge. Uh, tell all our viewers how they can get involved. Yeah, you can go to uh, Native Youth Rise, RiseAbove.org, and uh, you can learn a little bit more about Rise Above. We're, we're helping men or Native American youth. Golf tournament's going to raise money for that cause. Uh, we're going to have a lot of celebrities. We're going to have a first-class tournament out of Snoqualmie Ridge. There's still room to uh, join us. Uh, we still have foursomes available. So uh, you can also go to um, Puck. You've got the link up, right? Yeah, we'll you've put the link, link up out there for yeah, everyone. And that's yeah. another place to go. That's probably even an easier way to go and get registered for sure. the golf tournament. Yeah, you're the uh, you're the best. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you next Monday. All right, Jace. Thanks, man.
There he is. Uh, Bill Kruger, Root Sports, all brought to you by Rise Above Foundation. Every Monday's here at DuckPuckSports.com. All right, until the next time, we'll talk to yes. you soon. As always, we promise to be better. No shoes, no ties. So. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>